Hey guys, today I'm in the 964 heading up to Morris, Connecticut to meet up with my buddy Kenny. Now he is crazy and he finds unbelievably unique cars and he said he's got a Fiat that I have to check out. So we're gonna head up there today on Drive Protect. You always have something crazy. Here she is. Big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this episode. More on this later. After a long, beautiful drive upstate, I arrived at the farm to meet up with Kenny and Nick and to see what they found. Larry. What's going on, brother? What's up, man? How are Good you? See you? What's up, man? How are you? So you guys piqued my interest. I heard you got a Fiat that's weird. You guys are weird guys. So what, <laughs> so what did we get this time? 1967 Fiat Dino Spider. Wow. Very, very rare. It is a very rare car. It is a beautiful project car. Hopefully it makes someone very happy. All right, let me see it. The anticipation here. The anticipation. I get so excited for the reveal every time I'm doing Ah, oh, yeah, look at this. It's got a little paint. Yeah. What color is this? This is Rosso Orsi, which is actually a coupe color. So it's not its original color. It has been repainted. We have an all aluminum, Ferrari derived V6. It's a two liter. It looks pretty clean too. It is very clean. The gentleman who owned this previous did an engine rebuild maybe about 25 years ago. It's maybe run 2,000 miles since. Inside, let's take a look here. So we have the original brown leather interior in the back. And I think you could really do a good job cleaning that up. Yeah, we got some mold going on here. But sure yeah. do. So gentleman that we purchased this car from he bought this in 1974 when he was deployed overseas in Italy. Wrapped it all up at the end of his deployment, put it in a shipping container. I have the original bill of lading and export documentation wow. from the car, 1974. Brought it back to Georgia. It's been in his basement ever since. Again, he didn't put very many miles on this thing and it's been his labor of love and his baby. So it took me about seven years to buy this car from him. Um, he finally called me up last year and said, I think it's time. So here she is now up here in the hills of Connecticut, and we're, we're super excited to have it. All right, well, let's get it back down to the shop, get her cleaned up, find a new home. This is one of only 1,163 2.0 Fiat Dino Spiders ever made. And according to the Fiat Dino owner's registry, it estimates that only 30 to 40% of those still remain today. So although this may require some love, she's a pretty rare find. Bright and early the next day, the Fiat made the trip down to the studio in the rain, and we gently pulled her off the trailer. <laughs> This is gonna be a project. Once inside and on the lift, I found the lead hammer for the knockoff wheels in the trunk. This thing had clearly been used once or twice before. Now, if you notice, the driver's side wheels came off in the traditional Lefty Lucy type manner, while the passenger side are removed by spinning the knockoffs in the right or the clockwise direction, which is obviously confusing because normally that would tighten any nut or screw. Anyhow, with the wheels off and the Fiat in the air, step one is to give the undercarriage and the wheel wells a scrub down with ammo foam, brute, and boost to help reduce the future rust and to clean up the years of spider webs and dirt from the last drive all those years ago. During the process, you can really see just how much mud came out of the undercarriage. Speaking of Ferraris, next week we're working on this, a Ferrari 296 a GTS, a brand new, absolutely amazing. Make sure you stay tuned for that. But a huge thank you to our sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace gives people a powerful and beautiful platform from which to create 
your very own website. Now what's super cool is you can connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated members only content and you can manage your members, you can send email communications and leverage the audience insights all in one easy to use platform. Again, ridiculously cool. Now what's really fun is you can create a community on your Squarespace website with a fully integrated commenting system that supports threaded comments, replies and even likes. You can also use their powerful blogging tools to categorize, share and schedule posts as well. I can get used to this thing. Oof. You can extend Squarespace's already powerful e-commerce capabilities with Squarespace extensions. These are third-party tools that can help manage inventory, promote products, streamline bookkeeping, and reconcile and even file sales tax while shipping items across the globe. And don't forget, you can display posts from your social profiles on your website and automatically push your website content to your favorite social media channels so your followers can share it too, like this one here. Go to squarespace.com for your free trial, and when you're ready to launch, use promo code squarespace.com slash M-O-N-Y-C to save 10% off your first purchase of a domain or a website. Now, back to the fiat. Up top, same thing. Dirty, grimy, and moldy. So I filled my bucket with foam and I throw away wash towel, then rinse the paint and top before giving her her first real wash in 40 years. Okay, at this point, I cleaned the undercarriage and the exterior, and it's actually looking pretty good. Now, with all the dirt off, I can get a better look at the paint. I did a quick test spot right here on this panel and right here. Now, if I take the paint depth gauge, put it on there, you can see it's about four. And if I go on the side panel, 5.6, and we walk around over here, 5.6 again, kind of interesting. Now, if you can see, do you see the difference in the hue? of the color there, it's a little bit different. This is a little bit lighter than this one here. So clearly the car has been repainted a bunch of times, plus Kenny said it, and here's another verification. You can see right underneath there, see it's kind of yellow. So I think the car was yellow, like you said, or some other color, and then I think you said it went silver. Nonetheless, there's multiple um, layers of different types of paint here. So what's, what's my point? What we're trying to do here is just preserve and kind of bring back the depth and the shine. If you can see with my light, it looks much better in that one spot. And then this is the bad area. You know, I didn't do it yet before and sort of after, and I didn't polish it either. So this is unpolished. So there's actually room for me to take this thing and, and get it back. So the next step, I'm gonna actually work on the exterior first. Usually I work on the interior, but I'm just too curious to see what this is gonna turn out to be. And again, this is a mishmash of paint. You can see the middle there is a different color as well. But potentially when I'm done, this thing's gonna look pretty good. And then we'll hop on the interior and clean that up a bit as well. I love these old barn finds. For the paint restoration, I'm using the ammo shear cutting pad first because the paint is in awful condition and it needs to be leveled a bit to remove the scratches and swirls. Check this out. Even after the first pass, the paint looks much better. And notice no paint transfer has gone onto the pad. In other words, the shear pad remained white and not red, indicating it has some type of clear coat present on the surface. Now, afterwards, I finished up the 50-50 with a straight cut waffle pad and exfoliate polishing fluid. The trunk had a huge transformation, so I was optimistic about the rest of the car.
With the paint now preserved the best that I can get it, it's now time to focus on the moldy interior. As you can see, white mold spores, spider webs, and years of grime cover every surface because the convertible top typically doesn't seal the car off well enough, or at least as good as a coupe might, especially in humid areas where this sat, like Georgia, where the moisture can enter the car and start the mold growing process. So this is concern number one, aside from the normal gross condition. Okay, so the outside's done. Now we're gonna focus on the interior. Step number one is I'm gonna remove everything because quite frankly, it's just all removed. It's all just junk here because I wanna clean everything up here, which is kind of the big problem. If you focus up uh, at the top, you can see that there's white mold. So I wanna clean that first, but I don't wanna have all the mold kind of dripping down here. So luckily these things just came unbolted. So I'll pull them out. And there's a bunch of mats and whatnot that we're gonna pull out uh, as well and then focus on the roof. Ugh light. With most of the easily removable interior now out of the car, I scrubbed the inside of the convertible top and hit it with steam to help remove the odor as well. I repeated that same process on pretty much everything else on the inside of the car. With the interior now mold-free and vacuumed, I used the diffuser with shag fabric cleaner in the reservoir on all the green carpets and rugs as gently as necessary because they were a little bit on the delicate side. Afterwards, I used the steamer, but this time I used extra water releasing from the head. Then I steam backed everything up. Afterwards, you can see all the brown smelliness and loveliness in the reservoir. I got rid of that. Then I go back in with the diffuser. I turn off the shag and just use air alone, blow the fibers up. It helps it dry out faster and it gets ready for the final vacuum. And then of course, after all that, the reinstallation of the interior. Next, I added ammo mousse conditioner and UV protection to the very dried out plastic, leather, and vinyl. And then I let it soak in a bit while I worked on the outside of the convertible top, make sure that was clean as well as the underneath. Then the back grime covered plastic window with some steam to loosen up the gunk. Once everything was clean and I kind of scooped it up with a microfiber towel, then I went back in with exfoliate polish by hand and a microfiber towel to gently polish away the yellow haze or tint from years of sun exposure. On the outside trim and the tight spots, like the taillights and the emblems, I used a one inch pneumatic polisher and a microfiber pad to level out the dried out surfaces. For the chrome trim, like the bumper, I first cleaned the surface spots with plum wheel cleaner, then gently rubbed with 4 aught steel wool, and then I went back in and polished it out with a 3-inch sheer wool pad on a Rupes LHR75 and exfoliate polish to brighten up the damaged chrome. Was it perfect? Absolutely not, but it was way better than before. I repeated those same exact steps on the front bumper and trim as well. Finally, I applied Ammo Blush Pro Finishing Wax to increase the depth of the deep red paint. The next day, while sort of cleaning up the little trim parts there, I asked Steve if he'd be kind enough to come over and just give us an idea of what potentially could be going wrong with it. Why wasn't it starting and running properly? I say we start, we start clipping wires and see what happens. Yes. 
Parker getting out of the boot too. These wires are junk. Coming out of the boot? Yeah. I'm gonna do it again. Go ahead and fire. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I see it right there. I can see it from here. Yeah. As it turns out, we have an ignition leakage from a disengaged boot. Now, after some tweaking with Steve, we tried it a few more times, and although it didn't sound great, we actually sort of got her running, which was a big accomplishment. There we go. Ah! Yes, it's, it's idling. Oh, do you think it was just the ignition? Those wires? No, I think there's more to it. More to that. it? Yeah. But she's idling. Yeah. Hopefully we can take her down the road. Kenny's gonna be very surprised. You're the man, Steve. Woohoo! Now, with some life coming back to the two liter, I was really excited, so I called in Sean, which was Kenny's friend, to put on a new exhaust, which requires the delicate touch of a sawzall and a blowtorch for disassembly. <laughs> Once everything was removed and with some Permatex silicone on the ends, the new exhaust was jammed into place and it looked and hopefully at some point will function a thousand times better than before. Now, because we had Sean there, I asked him to also diagnose and to figure out what the other issues were from it just turning over to potentially now running strong. So he did a bunch of work there to help us get this thing back on the road. While Sean was playing whack-a-mole with the engine, I focused on the tires. Okay, at this point, I'm ready to clean the wheels, and I just took a quick look at it, and I said, man, these things look a little different. And sure enough, the tread pattern is different from the front to the rear. So right off the bat, we're gonna probably have to change the tires. But I said, all right, let's see how old they are. I know this car's been sitting for a very long time. To do that, you can look at the code right here. It starts with DOT, or Department of Transportation. After that, there's two letters, and that uh, is specifies the manufacturing plant. So that is where it was actually manufactured. Then this is the tire code which is the next two sometimes it's four letters and then after that you're going to see four numbers typically that is the internal code at the plant that made the tire so if god forbid there's something went wrong or there's some sort of defect they can go back in and, and sort of figure out where that batch is now where it becomes interesting or more relevant for us is the last four digits here 0718 07 means that's the seventh week of after 2000 of the 18th year meaning 2018 so seventh week of 2018 so for just to sort of break it down a little bit we're almost about six years or so at the date of this filming of the video here so six years old we don't really know a history plus there's different uh tread patterns i'm gonna recommend that we actually change these all together so i'm gonna do that as a surprise for kenny get these things changed out before we even clean them up because they're probably gonna get dirty in the transformation meaning taking the tire off but it's kind of interesting if you look here See all the white? That's usually the lubrication. So when I first saw that, I was like, wow, these kind of look like new tires. And I bet you they were back in 2018, but just because it's been sitting there, they have dry rot and a little bit of flat spots on them. It's just not safe to put on the car. So we're gonna change them. To keep the original look, yet with modern technology, I went with the Vredestein Sprint Classics, which feature a summer compound molded in a symmetric tread design with a classic look that handles great even in wet weather. The tire's internal structure includes twin steel belts on top of a single ply rayon casing, along with multiple sipes with the tread ribs creating additional biting edges for driving in the rain and improved hydroplane resistance from the grooves that allow the water to flow through the tire's footprint, allowing the Sprint Classics to handle speeds up to 168 miles an hour, which would be insane in the Fiat and probably only possible if I dropped it out of an airplane. But it is nice to know that the tire is overbuilt, it's modern, and it's no longer mismatched, so I think Kenny's gonna be pumped. With the old rubber replaced with the new, I mounted them on the car, added some mud tire dressing, and the transformation was night and day from just a week ago. For the very last touch before Kenny arrives, I added 3M double-sided tape to the Pininfarinan badge on the dashboard, and then she was good to go.
Hey, buddy. Larry. Good to see you. Holy there crap. There she is. How crazy, right? Look at that. <laughs> you weren't kidding when you said I had to come down here, man. That is beautiful. So we polished everything on here. The paint looks fantastic. Now, here's the thing. When we were there in the barn, we realized that there were three different paint. It is, in fact, true. So we have non-metallic paint back there. It looks spectacular. Yep. We have metallic paint up front, a little bit different color. And then the third one is we have metallic but a different color down below so you have the rainbow of fiat dinos that looks fantastic the chrome oh that came way back that was that was a big deal that was super fun my goodness now when it comes to the tires you had mismatched tires gotcha and they were out of date so not safe we uh, hooked you up with some sprint classics of course from Vredestein. unbelievable look at the tread pattern very cool right those are fantastic yeah now on brand the inside, new rubber Oof. brand new rubber inside mold everywhere underneath uh, she was the gross. top. Yeah, so she we, was we, gross. we cleaned all that up, shampooed everything inside. And then of course, I called your buddy, Sean. Now Sean yep. came here, thank God for him. He put a new exhaust on, he tinkered around, and we even got Steve from across. We had like the whole town here trying to get this thing started. For this moment here, are you ready? I wanna hear it, <laughs> let's hear it. There she is! Woo! Listen to that roar! This is excellent, Unbelievable, man. right? Thank you so much again. Ah, uh, no worries. What a fun project. Amazing. Woo! I can't wait to drive it. After our very quick joy ride, we loaded her up on the trailer and she was off to find a new home. As always guys, thanks for watching and if you have a car that needs some love and a new garage to call its own, shoot me an email at larry at I'll see you guys next time.